anode rods. We've talked about them quite a few times uh, in some other videos, uh, especially on TikTok. And the question I get a lot is, what is an anode rod? What does it do? Do I have an anode rod? How do I access it? So this video is gonna be specifically about anode rods, what they do, how to change them, when to change them, um, and a few other fun tips about them. So first things first, what is an anode rod? An anode rod is a steel core wire wrapped in magnesium, zinc, and aluminum, or a combination of the three, sometimes just one, depends on which one you buy. But what does it do? An anode rod is designed to be a sacrificial part, meaning it is meant to break down instead of your tank. It prevents corrosion of the tank by attracting minerals in the water, such as lime and iron and a few other minerals, and in turn breaking this down in an electrochemical process opposed to the tank of your water heater breaking down. So in short, it helps prevent corrosion of the tank by itself corroding, hence the term sacrificial part. As far as the materials they're made of and which one to use, magnesium is generally better for soft water and uh, good treated city water, whereas the aluminum and zinc is much better for hard water um, and working in those conditions. So in my opinion, the aluminum zinc is a better option because you're hooked up to most campground water, you don't know the quality of the water, and you're just going to get better results out of it. Now where are you going to find an anode rod? You're only really going to find an anode rod on a suburban tanked water heater. So in other words, if your water heater looks like this, you're going to have an anode rod located at the bottom and you're going to need a 1 and 1 16 socket to remove it. This is essentially where you drain your water out and this is what's going to come out. That is where your anode rod is. So an inch and a 16 socket, turn it to the left, pulls it out, drains the water heater, which you should be doing regularly, and this is what's going to pull out. All right, so when do we change this anode rod? Well, you should be draining your water heater regularly, which gives you a good chance to check on it. You want to drain your water heater regularly because as this breaks down, as you can see here, there are pieces of it missing, and those will make their way to the bottom of the tank and eventually into the plumbing system and cause all kinds of issues with clogging valves, clogging screens on faucets and stuff. So you're going to want to check it out every time you pull it and drain your tank, which you should be doing regularly. and you want to replace it actually before it looks like this because the more of this that gets in your water system the more problems you're going to have you definitely want to replace it long before it looks like this one here this one is definitely no good this is borderline you should not let it get anywhere past this for as cheap as these are i wouldn't even let it get like this really every six months to a year but it's hard to say it depends on how hard the water is and how much work the anode rod itself is doing so you'll have to kind of find your own time frame depending on how it looks every time you pull it out. Again, you should be draining your water heater very regularly so you can get the sediment out and flush the water heater so you can keep an eye on the anode rod. Again, you are only going to need this if you have a suburban water heater. If you have an Atwood Dometic water heater, you have an aluminum clad tank, not necessary. And same with tankless models, uh, you're not going to find this on there. So if you have a suburban water heater, this anode rod is a very important part of your system. Make sure you're changing it regularly, checking it regularly, and most importantly, make sure you guys press that subscribe button if you want to see more tips, tricks, and tours, and RVs like these.